Why is my once badass high fay now a housewife? She did nothing and went nowhere. WTF. Shall I say more? <laughs> Hello everyone. I am Karina and welcome to Bickish Babbles. Today, I am somewhat excited for the video that I'm going to be making. And if you read the title, you already know what's going on. But... I recently read A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Maas, and I'm just going to give you my thoughts on it. First of all, this is going to be a negative review, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, it is going to be a negative review, and I do know that a lot of people hate negative reviews and don't want people to talk negatively about books, and if this is not your type of thing, you know, I'm sorry. But you might want to hear me out because I'm not going to just bash this book. Just hear me out, right? Um, and also, I want to let you know from the beginning that I know why some people may love this book. And I'm going to tell you why you may love this book. So let's get into it. First of all, I'm going to give you a non-spoiler, very quick, quick, very quick and brief review. And then I'm going to go into this spoiler review, which is, there's nothing really to spoil. And the first thing that I have written is, this book was unnecessary. Yeah. So in the end, I gave this book a, uh, like a 3 stars or a 2.5. I'm not really like, like I haven't decided because... This is the type of book that you will enjoy if and only if you love the characters and you enjoy every single aspect of them. And even then, it's just like, me who loves every single character, I was still disappointed. So, I want to point out that this, at least for me, and I've heard other people that agree with me, this book read like fanfic. It, it read like something that you would find on Tumblr. But it is fanfic, at least for me. I felt the whole time that I was on Wattpad reading fanfic. And I personally don't enjoy fanfic. Uh, and I had issues with it. The thing that, if you haven't read the book, the thing that I want you to get away with or take from this review is don't... or just go in with low expectations. And I'm not saying that this book is the most horrible book ever written. It was just a disappointment. Personally, I love the books and I have bought every single book and I wish I had other versions of those books because I love the world. I love the world of Prithian and I love every single character. But I just... I would not buy that book. It is overpriced for what it is, and the whole time I was thinking this is a fourth book in the series, and then it turns out it's a novella, and I found out like a week before it was released. So I'm very thankful that I got it from my school library, and I would encourage you to do the same. Um, I remember the day that I got it, there was only two copies left. I got it, and then the girl after me in the line got the other one, and my friend was waiting for me to finish reading my copy so that I could return it to the library and she could get it. And everyone was so excited about this book, that's why I think that right now there's so many books about it, because there was so much hype on this book, because everyone loves the world of Prithian. And that's why I really think this book was such a disappointment, because of what we expected from Sarah J. Mass, and then we get this, you know? So again, if you really love the characters, and if you semi-enjoy reading fanfic, I would read it, but go to your library and go on overdrive, you know? And then after you read it, you can buy it, so that then you can reread it again, but I definitely will not be reading this book. This is one of what I wanted to get out with. So if you read this book, now you can uh, listen to every single thing that I have written here. So as I said, the first thing that I wrote is this book was unnecessary. And it really was. It felt like nothing happened in this book. And it shouldn't have existed at all. 
Like, I could have done without reading it, you know? Like, there's... Like, almost nothing happens. But some things do happen, you know? And I will read you the pros. More of the characters. Elaine is now my queen, which is facts. We learn more about more and Elaine and Az. So first, let's talk about the pros. We do learn more of the characters, especially more. We go to a little ranch that she has, she has horses, and we learn more about what happened when she, you know, was left outside of the Autumn Court by her family, and we, we get a little bit more of that. Uh, we learn more about Cassian and how he just wants to help people, and he, he goes to this other woman and, you know, buys out the whole establishment, like all the, the winter wear that she has, and he has them, you know, disperse it, and we, we kind of learn that he has such a kind heart, you know, no, he wants to give back to people. And then we have also Elaine, who had such great character development. She used to be this very, very irritatingly shy character who just wouldn't get out of her room, and she annoyed the heck out of me. Like, just, ugh! Like, she, I would be just like, stop being, like, how you are. But, like, you have to understand that she was going through a trauma, whatever. But she is so and she's doing so much better in this book. And if you like Elaine, then you really will enjoy this book. Because we have her talking to Az, and I will actually try to insert some pictures here of some fan art that I found on Twitter. She gives Az this little vial of powder that you can mix into water to relieve your headaches. And it was the funniest and cutest little moment that they had, and I ship it, I, I don't really ship Elaine and Lucian, I know some people do, but I don't, uh, and it was just so cute, and we have Elaine make a cake for uh, Feyre, and it's just like, ah, uh, and she got uh, Nesta books, and just her development as a character was so satisfying, and I really enjoyed it. Those are kind of the pros. Now let's go into the cons. And number one, we have absolutely no character development for the rest of the characters. So we have Feyre, and there is no character development. We have Nesta, and there is character regression. Like, she goes back. Um, I have it written right here. Nesta took one step forward and a thousand steps back. In the end of Akawar, I actually really like Akawar. I know a lot of people will disagree with me, and they look, they like Akamath better. I really like Akawar because it had more of that like political element to it. And then we have Elaine with that, um, sorry, Nesta with in the end, and she just broke my heart, and I was just like, yes, she's getting better. And then she just goes back to being this closed up human she was. And she goes even further than that, and she becomes just absolutely ruthless. She's living in the slums of the uh, city. She's not talking to her sister. She completely forgot that it was Feyre's birthday. She got her nothing. She doesn't care about anything or anyone. And I know it's just because of the darkness in her or in the cauldron went into her, and now she doesn't have a heart. But I'm, I'm just thinking, why would you make us like her a little bit more, and then make us hate her again. You know what I mean? And I, my favorite ship, and I will admit I like them better than Feyre and Rysand, is Nesta and Cassian. Because they are polar opposites. Nesta is so ruthless and dry, and she generally just is irritating. And that's the thing that they share in common, is that Cassian is very irritating, but he's also so kind and fun and lively, and he, he likes, you know, being with people, and Nesta doesn't. She's very antisocial, you know? And they are, again, completely polar opposites. So I think that that interaction that they have with each other is beautiful. Why are you doing this to Nesta? Like, I was starting to like her, and she... I. Like, she's, she was one of those characters 
that I would love to hate. Because she was so irritating, but there was still a good quality about her. And like you knew she was struggling. And you knew she was slowly getting better. But there's still like she's just so rude. And the only person that she's not rude to is Elaine. And I don't I truly don't understand why she blames Feyre. And I'm this is the truth. I am genuinely excited to have a book from her perspective and her and Cassian's story because I generally want to know why are you being like this? Like I know that Cauldron and you used to be a human but Feyre went through this and Feyre could help her and it's just like ugh she's just so she makes me <sighs> so angry. Okay I'm just gonna stop talking about Nessa because I'd be here for like ever and keep repeating myself. I also have here that it read like fanfic which is also, it could be a good thing, but I would not pay $17 for fanfiction. I would rather just go on Tumblr or Wattpad and read fanfiction there. Because it was literally them in one week of their lives. And uh, that's it. That's literally it. It had no plots, no climax, nothing happened. If you want to give it a plot, the whole plot would be them trying to get, them trying to figure out what to get each other for solstice. That's the plot of the book. That's the climax. Ooh, we all got each other something for solstice. Like that, you know, like you'd think even a novella would have like a climax and would have a plot. But this just, it was... You know? Also, I have Amran, WTF, in all capitals. So Amran, uh, I'm the kind of person, and I know that I, I may not have the popular opinion here, but I truly believe, and I haven't written here, I haven't written here, it says, Amran is asexual, fight me please. And also, Varian, go away, no one likes you. I don't get the relationship. Am I the only one? Like, why are they together? Amran, since Akamath, she just seems to me like this badass, godly type of creature that just would just be in herself. And when I think of an asexual character, I think of her. And I was expecting an Akawar for, um, her to be asexual and just come out and be like, yeah, I don't care about anyone. But then she goes off and she's with Varian, and I'm just like, why? <laughs> like, Amran is one of my favorite characters, and she's so sassy. Also, why doesn't she know how to pee? Like, I don't get it. Like, they're dumbing her down, and she's not dumb. She has lived for so long so long and you're telling me she doesn't know how to pee. They're just using her for comedy and... I don't get it. I really don't. I... I... Like I said, Amarin is asexual. Fight me, please. Like, I talked to my friend about this and, like, she would be the perfect character to bring more diversity into this book. Like, just... But now it's too late. You can't make her asexual now. Just leave her alone, man. Just let her be Amran. Sarah tried to add some intrigue with the thought of El the Illyrians revolting, but took it nowhere. Okay. So they were telling us about how in the war camps they wanted to, you know, integrate the women into, you know, fighting and stuff like that. And they were talking about how some people might fight the whole unity and stuff like that, but nothing happened. Like, they never had a discussion, or Rysan never went to Feyre and was like, oh, I'm worried that this is gonna happen, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, like, I know they're setting it up for the next book, but take it somewhere. Give us a little something, you know, like, oh, there's talk of revolt and freaking... I don't know the places in the book. Next I have, Feyre is so rich. Boo hoo. We're told about all the good things Feyre does, but not shown. Okay, 
So Feyre is constantly com complaining about, I have so much money, I have nothing to do with it. There's like so much money in the account, oh my god, I've never had to deal with having so much money. And she keeps mentioning how they have so much money in their funds. And I'm just like, okay, we get it, you're rich, you know? Like, you don't have to mention it 10,000 times. Like, we get it, you were poor and now you're rich and you don't know what to do. Donated to charity! Which they said that she did. And again, going back to the whole, uh, they were, t were told about the good things Farrah does but not shown. Another great thing to make us love Farrah more. Farrah is such a strong woman and she is a fighter. And, you know, she cares about people. So that, in my head, would be absolutely the most perfect thing to bring into a novella. Her trying to, you know, go out to places and actually helping, you know, showing us the ruins and her going to people and interacting with those people who have suffered, going into the human land, see how they're coping with it. It's just little things like that that I needed in order to be like, yes, Spinnerat, you're my queen, you know? Like, she tried, but like, don't tell us about all these great things she does and like, how she tried to go to a charity and then they were like, no, you're fine, you help a lot. No, show us. Take us with her. Show us how she's suffering because of, oh my god, like, I'm trying to help these people rebuild, rebuild the city and the places that they have lost and it's horrible. You know, don't just tell us. That's, that's kind of my issue. And I know people are going to be like, you should write a book. Like, no, as a reader, that's what I want to see. And I'm sure that's what you would want to see to connect to the characters a little more, right? <laughs> I have Leave Tamling Alone, TF. <laughs> okay, so this seemed really out of character for me. The fact that Reese, I keep calling him Rysand, I'm sorry. The fact that Reese went to the Spring Court and just stomped on Tamlin. And I feel like. It's not like Reese. At least of what I got from Reese is that he is forgiving and he is compassionate. And yes, Hamlin did so many horrible things to him and his family and Feyre, but he is suffering. You know, as a sensible being, you'd think, okay, he's suffered enough, I'm not gonna stomp on him more. But that's exactly what Reese does. And I'm just like... I read that and my literal reaction was... What? Like why... Like he gave you life. He literally... You're alive thanks to him. Feyre is alive thanks to him. I... Like... Ugh. Like, yeah, he was wrong in the way that he wanted to care for Feyre, but he, in the end, he cared about her, and he wanted to take care of her, you know? He did, like, suffocate her, but I understand him as a character, and he's very flawed. So, I'm thinking, like, Sarah J. Maas doesn't have a villain for this very short story, so I'm gonna make Tamlin the villain again. No! He was getting so better! He's lost everything and now you're dragging him through the mud again like I get it he's crazy he's psychotic he's controlling but he's I feel like as a character he's growing you know and that just bothered me that you know I didn't love Feyre and Tamlin together but I didn't hate him as a character and I don't hate him as much as other people do. Maybe that's why I'm a little mad about what Reese did. But I don't, I truly don't understand, like, why would Reese do that? It just seemed very out of character for me. <laughs> I, it says, I didn't really want to read this. <laughs> I was really struggling through reading it. And I was doing a 24 hour readathon, which is like, <sighs> I'll leave it link up here. It also says, a 500 year old hormonal teen. That's who Reese is. 
it <sighs> Reese always seemed to me like a gentleman, you know? And from his perspective, I get it, we were seeing him from Feyre's point of view, but his perspective, he's such a bro. Like, he's just like, you know? And he's constantly just thinking about Feyre, oh my god, Feyre. And I'm just like, you're working. What are you doing? Like, he's literally a teenager. Kids, WTF. Feyre said she didn't want any. Why is my badass, why is my once badass high fay now a housewife? She did nothing and went nowhere. WTF. Shall I say more? At the end of the book, Fair is like, she shows Reese an image and she's saying, mmm, and he's like, oh my god. And I'm like, no. Like, that's one of the first things that she decided, I don't want to have kids. She's 21 years old. Also, that part where she was like, or Reese was like, oh my god, she's 21 years old, I'm 500. I'm just like, this is why it feels like fanfic. You know, most of the time they don't address this, and in fanfic, you'd be like, oh my god, my husband is 500 years old, my wife is 21 years old, I'm so old. Like, that's something I would read in a fanfic and, like, not in an actual book, which I guess is kind of important to address but it it was just like out of nowhere and I was like like we know also she's 21 years old why are you having a kid I get it it's hard to have children but you have infinity she's an immortal oh my god I don't get it I truly don't again she was the whole time complaining, I have so many envelopes to open, I have so many uh, letters to reply to, I have to sort through them. When did she become a housewife? And then she's complaining, I need a secretary. Get a secretary then, like... <laughs> okay, so I think... That's it for today. It. Again, I was disappointed and this book is not horrible, but if you're gonna read this, you have to lower your expectations and you can't expect it to be as good as the other Sarah J. Mass books. And I think the reason that I'm so angry and frustrated is because I was disappointed. Truly. It's just. Like, I expected so much more, and sadly, I will not be buying the book because I'm not going to reread it. It's just not going to happen. And I understand that some people like this book, and I want to talk to you if you liked it. Please leave a comment down below and tell me why you liked this book and the aspects that you liked of it. Because my friend hasn't read it, and I just, I need to talk to someone about it. And I'm sad that my first book review... I have only two videos in my channel and my first book review has to be a negative one. And it is truly scary with everything happening on the booktube community with like hateful reviews and the fact that you can't be hateful towards books and it's just a little scary. I really hope that you understand that I don't hate Sarah Day Mass and I don't hate her work. I'm just truly disappointed and I really have problems with the book, you know, and I, I hope that you understand my problems and I hope that we're both open-minded and I truly want to, again, I truly want to know why you like that book and I, again, I can see why people like the book and I can see why you would enjoy it. Uh, that's just how I'm going to end it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like and subscribe and please comment down below. Again, I want to hear your thoughts on this book. And uh, that's it for me for now. I'm gonna go now. <laughs> Bye, guys.